Ballpark Nation presents Welcome to Go Go Astros, your look at the two-time World Series champions from three guys who have been here since Art Howe had hair. Hey everybody, Jim Christopher from Go Go Astros here for another Go Go Astros short hops. And it wasn't a lot of short hops yesterday, it was a long drive from Castellanos that buried the Astros yesterday as they lost to the Phillies again and didn't get a run across, I don't think. I should probably double check, but... Really, what's the point? But in other news, the Mariners, who I have said from the beginning of this season or before the season that they are a 500 team and they continue to prove themselves to be a 500 team by losing to the struggling uh, Tampa Bay Rays yesterday without scoring very many runs either. I think they put up two. Uh, First of all, also shout out to the Tampa Bay Rays uh, radio play-by-play team. A lot of fun listening to them last night. It's kind of what I do when I need to relax is I'll uh, put on a game I don't necessarily invest super invested in and just kind of soak in the baseball as I drift off to dream. It's like a Travis Tritt song or something. Yeah, Astros have definitely struggled. However, they are at the end of August with a three-and-a-half game lead on the Mariners. Fangraphs has them somewhere around 88%. A uh, chance to make the playoffs, 87, I think, to win the division. Now, of course, Fangraphs is uh, a projection, and it doesn't necessarily mean anything until the games are played on the field. But there's a lot of reasons to feel good about the Astros. Also, hello, Kyle Tucker is running again and sprinting, and will be running the bases soon and should be back in a couple of weeks. You would think that the fan base that I represent and follow on Twitter – was the Chicago White Sox for all of the doom and gloom that came yesterday. There are a lot of ways to approach fandom. There's a lot of ways to approach life. It's my Dr. Phil moment for you. There's a great line in the movie Silverado where Kevin Klein says, you either approach the world like everyone's your friend or nobody is. That kind of applies here. You either can have a positive outlook on things while still being realistic or doom and gloom. And... I'm actually re-recording this episode because I had an interaction with the Maldalorian on X, and he was pointing out how um, if you're the fan who predicts defeat, predicts failure, and then celebrates when you're right, you're not a fan. You're an asshat. Make sure you follow him on X. And he's exactly right. I had conversations about this last night where you have one of two ways to approach this season. You either can – Look and surround yourself in all the things that have gone wrong, which, if you're being honest with yourself, not a whole lot's gone wrong since the, since the beginning of June. You're in a weird, tough stretch right now. But really and truly, yes, of course, the hole that was dug in April means there's very little margin for error. But I bet you a Mariners fan would trade places with you today if they could and be the ones that are three and a half games up and not staring history in the face. So you either can look at that, you can wait for your team to fail and then somehow get to be right when they failed and declare the era over, or you can look at all the things that are going for the Astros and and realize that this is a team that's gone to eight straight ALCSs for a reason, that when they put it together, they tend to put it together and they tend to get rolling. Let's not forget, they came within one game of the World Series after essentially clinching the division on a tiebreaker Last game of the season. And yeah, of course, Game 7 of the ALCS sucked last year. The season has not been a very easy one. And, you know, God bless Dana Brown for doing his best to keep plugging holes in the dike with finding any player off the scrap heap that might be able to help this team because players have underperformed or because players that we thought were getting back from injury haven't come back fast enough, if at all. So you can't say this guy isn't trying. This guy is not working. And I personally think the things that are happening for the most part are going to work out. I think Neris looks like a great pickup. I think um, I think there's, there's a lot of positivity going into it. But let's say that this is the season where the window closes or the – the run pauses, if temporarily or for a long time. There really are one of two ways that you can handle it. One, you can be the petulant child and throw a temper tantrum and say, they've sucked all along and and fire everybody. That can be your option. 
And it's a valid option to have. It's stupid and dumb, but yeah, you can do that. That can be your thing. Or you can take a macro human approach. And particularly for me, somebody who's been a fan of this team, where there are way more lean years than there were good, and tip your cap and thank everybody from Jim Crane to Jeff Luna to James Click to Dana Brown, all the way down to the Bat Boy for what has been an incredible run of baseball for the last eight years. An unprecedented run of baseball for the last eight years. Um, the kind of run that doesn't happen very often, so when it does, you should appreciate it. And then hope that the rebuild or the rearming or whatever word they want to use doesn't take very long. I don't get the sense that Jim Crane is the kind of guy that wants to go through another run of losing. I think he recognizes that he makes more money and has a better time when he's winning. And you can't get away with the whole Jim Crane is cheap because he's going into the stratosphere on payroll this year, including having already eaten a large salary. So you can let, again, petulant immaturity drive an irrational take of what this team is or enjoy the ride for however long it lasts. And, you know, to quote Chris Ledoux, when you get off, you thank the Cowboy for the ride and hope that this Astro team gets back. I have a lot of confidence in the future of this team. I feel very good about the team that's in place, and I hope to be proven right. I feel like the Astros are going to win the division. I think the last week of the season will be will matter only for seeding. And as we know, in the playoffs, anything can happen. And for the guy last night who commented on my tweet and said the Astros are cooked in the first round of the playoffs – it's almost as if the Astros in 2019 didn't lose to a team who struggled to get in and then got really hot. It's happened to us a couple of times. Why can't we be the one that does the, uh, the happening too? That's my take. Also, it is uh, mass day again, so I've got a different Astros tie on and an Astros dress belt, which, you know, I didn't buy myself. But when you're a big Astros fan or a Jaws fan or a Star Wars fan, it's all anyone ever gets you for gifts.